Work, Conservation of Energy, and Power The most powerful concepts in science are called conservation principles. They allow us to solve problems without worrying too much about the details of a process. We just need to know where it started and where it finished. We take a snapshot of a system initially and finally, right? Where it starts, where it finishes. By comparing those two, we can learn a lot. The momentum, which is represented by a little p of a system, is constant unless acted on by an outside force which imparts an impulse to it. The energy of a system is constant unless acted on by an outside force which does work on it. But what is work? Sometimes scientists take a regular word and give it a special meaning that doesn't match what you think it is. If you're holding up a heavy object, like this athlete down here, do you think you're working hard to hold it up? Of course you are. But in physics, if you don't change the energy of the object, you are not doing work. So from a physics point of view, this athlete is not doing any work while she is holding up the weights. Consider the system of an airplane here that is on an aircraft carrier's flight deck. The sailors provide a force as they push the plane. How would you know if any work is done? Work is done on an object, we're starting to define it here, when an outside force, in this case the sailors, moves the object to another position. The sailors only do work on the plane when they move it to a new position on the aircraft carrier's deck. As it moves, it has energy of motion, which we talked about earlier, that's kinetic energy. If the plane doesn't move though, its energy does not change, so no work is done, no matter how hard they push. If it doesn't move, no work. If an object experiences a force and does not move, so let's just look at this group of people here. Don't worry about the bicycle here. Pretend it's not there. Clearly, they're exerting forces on each other. But if nobody's moving, there's no displacement of the people, so therefore no work is done. That means there must be an equal opposing force because the object is in a state of equilibrium. If an object moves in the same direction as the direction of the force, the work done is positive. Work is greater than zero. So here we have a little block here. There's a force moving it or applied in this direction, which is moving it in a parallel distance here. So we have acceleration due to the unbalanced force. That's positive work causing that acceleration. If an object moves in a direction opposite to the direction of the force, Okay, objects moving this way, force is in this direction, the work done by that force is negative. W is less than zero. For example, if you give a box a quick push along a tabletop, setting it in motion in that direction, what's going to happen? It's eventually going to stop. Friction causes it to stop. The friction force is in this direction. So even though the object started moving this way, the friction force is doing what? It's slowing it down and it's in the opposite direction. The friction is doing negative work on the box and decreasing its kinetic energy. And again, acceleration occurs due to the unbalanced force. If the object moves in a direction perpendicular to the direction of the force, in this case, you've got gravity pulling down on this block and you've got a normal force from the surface pushing up, but the object is only moving horizontally here. No acceleration occurs in a vertical direction due to the fact that no component of force acts in the direction of displacement. The box here, the block, is not going up and down at all. Therefore, no work is done by either the normal force or the force of gravity. We're now ready to come up with an equation for work. The amount of work performed depends on the sum of the outside forces and the displacement it moves in the same direction as the net force. And net just means total forces. It is positive if in the same direction and negative in the opposite direction. So work is equal to the sum of the forces. That's what this sigma f here is. That's the sum of the forces times the displacement that's parallel to it. And it's also equal to the final energy minus the initial energy. This sigma f here 
right? It's an abbreviation for the sum of the forces, also called net force. D parallel is a displacement of the object in the same direction as our net force. In many situations, we can find the work done by calculating the change in energy of the system. For now, we're only going to deal with the two forms of mechanical energy that we defined early on, kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. Work can either increase or decrease the energy of a system. Positive work can add energy. Negative work can remove energy. Now, we're not destroying or creating energy. We're just putting it into different places. In equation form, initial energy plus work equals the final energy. Or here's initial energy, here's work, here's final energy. Or we can rearrange that where work is EF minus EI or delta E for the change in energy. What if no work is done on the system? Okay, so here's our equation in words. Here it is in letters. If no work is done, then work is equal to zero. So we have initial energy plus zero is final energy, or the initial energy is equal to the final energy. That is now our conservation of energy. Since work is the change in energy, it must have the same unit as energy. Work is force times displacement. The unit of force is the Newton, and the unit of displacement is the meter. So the unit, the unit of both work and energy is the Newton meter, or Nm, which I have up here. In order to honor James Prescott Joule for his contributions to the understanding of energy, this was in the 1800s, the Newton meter is named the Joule, or just J. It is often important to know not only if there is enough energy available to perform a task, but how much time will be required Power is defined as the rate that work is done or energy is transformed. So we have work over time or change in energy over time. Since work is measured in joules and time in seconds, the unit of power is joules per second. But to honor James Watt, who made critical contributions in developing efficient steam engines again in the 1800s, good time for science, the unit of power is known as a watt or just a W. 60 watt incandescent light bulbs convert 60 joules of electrical energy to heat and light every second. The same light output is now provided by a 9 watt bulb. Right here we had 60, now you only need 9 watts. And that converts 9 joules of electrical energy to mostly light and very little heat in every second. So much better here, right? Because you don't need the heat, you just want the light. Let's relate this now to everyday life, uh, especially if you're paying electric bills. Power companies bill residences and businesses by how much energy they use. You're getting billed for the energy. The energy used is found by multiplying the power of your electrical devices by the time that the energy is consumed. The unit is kilowatt hours, where one kilowatt equals a thousand watts. A nine watt LED bulb, like we showed earlier, which is replacing the old 60 watt incandescent bulbs, that operates for six hours a day for a 30 day month would consume, let's do some unit ca cancellation here. We have a nine watt bulb, we have one kilowatt is a thousand watts, so the watts will cancel, six hours a day and then we want to do it for 30 days. So that, let's see, the days cancel. So that gives us 1.62 kilowatts for a month, watt hours, excuse me. An average cost of a kilowatt hour is 15 cents. So the cost of operating that light bulb for a month is 24 cents. Now, if we had the old bulbs, what is that? That's almost seven times, let's see, seven times nine, yeah, almost seven times as much. So that would be seven times 24 cents. So that's like a buck 75. So the new bulbs are a lot cheaper. They cost a little more in the beginning, but they, uh, they pay for themselves over time and they last almost indefinitely. These things burn out all the time. Example time. A 16 Newton force is applied to an object that moves 12 meters in the same direction during the time that the force is applied. How much work is done on the object by the force? 
Let's start by writing down our givens. And we're d parallel here, right? Because it's in the same direction we want to find work. So our equation is work equals fd parallel. Substitute in our variables and we get a positive 192 joules work. Since the force is parallel and in the same direction as the object's movement, the work done is positive and equals the product of the force and the displacement. A 16 Newton force is applied to an object that moves 12 meters in the opposite direction of the force. How much work is done on the object by the force? We write our givens. Got to be a little careful this time. We have a force of 16 Newtons, and then we have a displacement that's still parallel, but in the opposite direction of the force, and that's 12 meters, and we need to find the work. So work is equal to force times distance, distance parallel, or the negative of the force that is still parallel, but in the opposite direction. Remember, if the force is opposite the displacement, we're going to get negative work. So we have work is minus 16 newtons times 12 meters, and we get a work of negative 192 joules. So since the force is parallel and in the opposite direction of the object's movement, the work done is negative and equals the negative product of the force and the displacement. How much force must be applied to an object such that 120 joules of work are done on it as it is displaced six meters? We write our givens, 120 joules of work, distance parallel 6 meters, and this time we want to find the force. So we start with our work equals FD parallel. We rearrange that equation to solve for force, so F is equal to work over distance. So it's 120 joules over 6 meters, or 20 newtons. A 30 newton force moves an object 5 meters in the same direction as the force. How much does the force change the energy of the object? So here's our givens, and we want to find the change in energy. So let's find the work first. The work will be force times a distance parallel, and it will be positive if it's in the same direction, which it is. So work is plus 30 newtons times 5 meters, or 150 joules. Now we use our work energy equation here. Initial energy plus work equals final energy. We re rearrange that to solve for work. So work is final energy minus initial, and that's also known as change in energy. So the change in energy equals work. So it's 150 joules. A 60 watt incandescent light bulb was left on for 10 minutes. How much energy is used by the light bulb? We start with our givens. 60 watts, time of 10 minutes, but we don't use minutes in physics problems, we use seconds. So if one minute has 60 seconds, 10 minutes has 600 seconds, and we want to find the energy. So power is energy over time. We want to rearrange that so we solve for energy. So delta E, energy, is power times time. The power, 60 watts, times 600 seconds, and we get 36,000 joules.